You just watched episode three of season two of The Mandalorian, and you just want to gush about this episode. Well, don't worry, you are in the right place. Welcome to J-Buck Studios, your home for reviews, reactions, and of course, ridiculousness. And yes, we are going to break down this episode three, season two, the heiress of The Mandalorian, this episode. My God, I... I love this episode, but before I get into my thoughts, spoiler free, obviously spoiler, let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments down below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Do you like where this is going? Do you love season two? I want to know in the comments down below, but without further ado, let's get into the spoiler free thoughts of what I thought about this episode, and I thoroughly enjoyed this, again, side mission. I've said week and week again that... This Mandalorian season, or this the show essentially, feels like a video game. It's You have this main mission, this main story mission, and then all of these spreading ones of getting new tech, information, contacts, uh, people with you. And that's what I think I loved about this episode of going off, fixing the ship, meeting these people, delivering this thing, but then getting more information to lead us on to episode 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You know, all of that. So I think that this was definitely not as strong as the first episode because that is a high bar to get to, but I think that this was much better, in my opinion, than the previous episode. So that is my spoiler-free thoughts, but getting into the spoilers, I, man, I, I just love the kind of lived-in feel of this episode. Again, it feels like a side mission going off instead of getting new tech, weapons, armor, people. This time he's getting information, but he does run into a handful of other people that I'll get into. But I liked how it felt like we're in space, we're in Star Wars, but this is taking on a pirate feel, very much like a port city run down with scoundrels and thieves and pirates and whatnot, and it's very much like sea shanty. You know, all of the creatures there are crustacean-type people, crab people, uh, uh, mod calamari, essentially, like that kind of race of people in this, so I loved the feel that it's set up. It very much does, all of the characters, especially the frog people that he delivers, feels like they belong in this port city, essentially. But then also, like I said, the, the almost lived-in feel, they're using or repurposing technology, a repurposed AT-AT, as a crane, essentially, bringing out the Razor Crest because it <laughs> fell into the water. So I loved that lived-in feel, especially even, like, the ship and other components of the restaurant bar that he went into, but also the pirate ship that he went onto, the Mandalorian did. It felt like pieces here or there were taken of ships and wreckage of other things that we've seen in previous episodes and also the main movies of the trilogies, prequels, all of that stuff. So I loved that feel, but then also the the danger. It turned the tides, no pun intended, at the drop of a hat, literally, of feeding this monster and then slapping in the child, essentially. Like, I was enjoying this episode and I was like, holy crap, they are going to kill the child. And then Mandalorian, the Mandalorian jumping in after him, and all of these crustacean people, crab people, googly, you know, from uh, Dead Man's Chest of Pirates of the Caribbean, they are just fighting him off because his armor is worth so much money. But then right here is where the episode essentially blossoms into bringing in more characters and more Mandalorians, because if we remember, he is on this kind of sea shanty dock town uh, planet to deliver the frog people, but also they knew that there's another Mandalorian potentially there. And they show up, they kick ass, they rescue the child, all of that, and we are revealed to three Mandalorians who aren't really following the religious patterns that THE Mandalorian, the one that we're following because they take off their helmets. And two of them are played by Sasha Banks, the wrestler, and then Katie Sackhoff. And Katie Sackhoff is Bo-Katan, but then, who people will know from Rebels and I believe the Clone Wars, I have not seen those. I am aware of the character, and she is very much kind of the heiress, that's what they're getting at with the title, of the Dark Saber, which ties into something a little bit later. But the two other Mandalorians that are with her are, again, Sasha Banks and another guy that I can't remember his name, but they they are both 
characterized or their character names are. Koska Reeves and Axe moves, I believe, along with, again, like I said, Bo Katan, Katie Sackhoff as, as the forefront. But they are a different form of Mandalorian. They're very much trying to get these weapons, the power, back to Mandalore, and she is the rightful heiress to the throne of Mandalore. So I'm curious if that's going to be a spin-off series, if we're going to come back to these characters later on in this series. I'm very curious about that, but they want Mandalorian to help them rob a ship. And this this like robbing or pirating of this Imperial ship very much does feel like that uh, the, the, from season one where they go into the prison and they break the guy out, but this is way more action-packed. I absolutely love this because they are throwing stormtroopers the, the, by the wayside. They are flying them up and dropping them. They are shooting. They are throwing bombs and whatnot. So I loved the feel of we need to get through each component of the ship to get to the bridge to take over the ship and get the weapons, but also... Throughout this, like I said, there's a lot of ass kickery and explosions. It's awesome, the action. But they are able to sprinkle in just that little bit of subtle humor that worked perfectly. An example is when the, the Imperial officer is saying that we have them trapped, but then they get sucked out of the ship. I thought that that was very subtle, but f the, the humor was placed perfectly. But then when we get to the end of the episode, I mean, it does, like, the, the Empire is very much... Uh, compared to Nazis and this is exactly that that feel because they're trying to crash the ship but also when they get caught he crushes something essentially in his molar and it kills him electrocutes him so that feel of the Nazis and again lived in empire on the run still following their their dark tactics essentially felt reminiscent but also right at the end Bo-Katan reveals that she is looking for the dark saber she used to have it and I think in the Clone Wars or Rebels it is revealed that she had the Darksaber at one time, Moff Gideon now has it, and she is off trying to capture him to get the rightful Darksaber to herself. So we can see that those three other Mandalorians with Bo-Katan at the forefront could spin off, we could run into them later, but they are very much after Moff Gideon and the Darksaber, but Bo-Katan reveals where the Mandalorian can take the child, revealing Ahsoka Tana, essentially this like forest planet or or moon of a forest planet not endor but that is i'm assuming where the next couple episodes of the mandalorian are going to lead is taking the child to see ahsoka tana and i love how this again this series feels like star wars but feels like it's lived in from the tech that they're using, the repurposing of technology and of machinery, essentially, but bringing in all of these characters, maybe it seems a little ham-fisted throwing them in, but I do think that it's bringing in all of these characters to potentially build out a whole new universe on Disney Plus with it fleshing out these characters. So I'm very much excited to see where potentially Bo-Katan goes, the Mandalorian, and then the reveal and introduction of Ahsoka Tana and potentially some, some Sith that are following her. Who knows what's going on? I want to see a lightsaber in this season of the next couple episodes who knows but that's my thoughts and breakdown of this episode three what did you think of it i thought that i absolutely loved it i like the video game setting again and where it is setting things up but what did you think of this episode did you love it did you hate it what aspects of this stood out to you i want to know in the comments down below but anyways as always thank you so much for watching watch some more videos up there or right over there you know brand new content every single week here on the jbox studios channel i'm working on my Scream 3 first watch reaction, so stay tuned for all of that. That should be posted this weekend. Follow all of my social media to stay up to date on everything I'm doing. Like this video, subscribe to the JBuck Studios channel, and until next time, we'll see you later.